just today I had a friend who uh, lives in Virginia. He, he texted me, he said, these masks that were going for $5.79 are now gone and the ones I'm trying to order online are $200 a piece. That goes to show you that the, the, the supply and demand. And speaking of supply and chain supply, supply chains, uh, talking with another hardware company, Liberty Hardware, by April they're going to start hemorrhaging because of the crisis. Now, how do we resolve all this? I don't know. We first understand this is a humanitarian crisis and that's where the energy, but right. economically this could be a factor as well because of some of the dependency that we've grown accustomed to on China itself. Congressman Walker, such a pleasure to have you on American Thought Leaders. <laughs> My privilege to be here. Thank you so much. So, and of course, we're going to talk about coronavirus, which is why we're doing this instead of this. Right. Do a little bit of modeling for everybody. No question. Um, it's uh, um, probably going to get worse before it gets better. Um, you're the ranking member on the subcommittee for counterterrorism and intelligence. That's I, correct. Um, yes. So you you have a kind of a particular view of this whole situation. Why don't you tell me what you're thinking? Yeah, we've been studying this issue uh, for some time. I, I know the president first offered some support January the 6th, which was refused uh, by the Chinese leadership on the first round. But from my perspective on the homeland security, you know, there's been some talk, how much is this is natural causes or is there a biological component to this with some of the, uh, some of the work that's being done in Wuhan? I'll leave it at that for right. now. Uh, it's reached a place where we're going to continue to look into that, but it's such a critical health care crisis now that we had to put a lot of our energy, if not all of our energy, into making sure that we're certainly taking care of the homeland, but also doing what we can, as America always has done, has been a beacon of hope specifically in this particular, med in the medical field altogether. So, you know, there was just this press conference uh, yes. where President Trump announced that Vice President Pence is going to be yes, leading the effort. Um, uh, I I guess that highlights the seriousness of the of the issue. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I was just asking our team on the way over tonight uh, to talk about a, a time they remember where the vice president was handled this much, with this much responsibility. We couldn't recall. So, so we are putting a lot of importance. In fact, uh, all of Congress is being called together in two days uh, for an 8 a.m. briefing before any departure this week. So, so I think the level of concern. I liken it much to, uh, I, uh, before moving to North Carolina at age 21, I grew up in Florida. And it was all, this is almost like preparing for a hurricane. We don't know which way that it's going to go, right. but our job is to make sure that we're prepared no matter what happens. So I don't know what you're hearing on the Intelligence Sump Committee, um, but so we just published an article today where we actually got sort of the first, what I would call real data from China, or what we believe is real data. Um, from one particular region, and it shows that the numbers, the real numbers versus to what's been kind of officially published are two to 52 times larger, the, yes. real, the real numbers. I don't know, how does that square with the kind of things you've been hearing? Well, it does, it, can talk it, about? it concerns us, but how does it square? It, 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 unfortunately, it squares with, with most of the propaganda that we've gotten out of the mainland and China over the years when it comes to information like this. Uh, being on Homeland Security, I can tell you that China uh, attacks us in a cyber security manner, manner tens of thousands of times per day. Now, we're still breaking down how much of that is state-sponsored versus private, but we know that, it, that it's coming from China, the bulk of it being state-sponsored. So at the same time, this is a, co a country we're trying to work trade deals and create some level of, of transparency that doesn't want to play their role in this. And, it's, it seems in the studies that I've had with China over the last several years that it's almost instinctive to mis misdirect. Uh, and that's frustrating because there are things that we could do uh, globally uh, as, as, the, as the economic power they've become, but also in moments like these where there's crises, where there, to us there's no benefit in them of not being truthful about this. And, uh, and I think the longer they delay, the more that has become uh, potentially more of a healthcare scare and healthcare crisis. So one of the issues that came up recently in, in an interview that I did was that uh, basically the, all the mask production, you know, the face masks, yes. and also the PPEs, the suits, yes, that yes. is basically has, is moved to China. Yes, unfortunately. So, yeah. um, that, I found that disturbing. Yes, in fact, that's interesting that you mentioned it. Just today I had a friend who uh, lives in Virginia he, he texted me, he said, these masks that were going for $5.79 are now gone and the ones I'm trying to order online are $200 a piece. 
that goes to show you that the, the, the supply and demand. And speaking of supply and chain supply, supply chains, uh, talking with another hardware company, Liberty Hardware, by April they're going to start hemorrhaging because of the crisis. Now, how do we resolve this? I don't know. We first understand this as a humanitarian crisis and that's where the energy, but right. economically this could be a factor as well because of some of the dependency that we've grown accustomed to on China itself. Right. There's another, another piece that I saw today was about how, you know, a lot of basically Amazon sellers, right, if you are out of stock, that moves your channel really, really down. Like you're not going to be able to sell later. So people are inflating their prices. So people don't buy a lot because they don't want to become out of stock. It's becoming a very real thing. It, it is. And, and I, we want to make sure, as I said, that we're prepared. I don't think we want to get to the place where there's widespread panic at this point, uh, or any point for that matter. We want to make sure that we're monitoring this. One of the interesting facts that have come out of this is that there have been no deaths for children age nine and under. So this is, as we study this, we're learning this is very age specific, age related. Uh, another thing that we're, we're watching closely is the spread recently in both South Korea and Italy and trying to trace that. And I think, uh, I think the president even said tonight of the 15 uh, people of Americans that we have right now that have been diagnosed with coronavirus, uh, eight of those are on the way home, another five are getting better, and there's two they're watching, but they feel like those will get better as well. This, the, the frightening part of this is how long this uh, coronavirus seems to be uh, uh, maintain its potency even after, whether it's on a countertop or whether it's, so, so we're trying to encourage, uh, as my wife being a family nurse practitioner, make sure you're washing your hands and doing everything from the common sense practice as well. Right, like fist pumping. Fist pumping is a good place to start, yes. Right. So um, where do you expect things to go now, basically, from what you've, the kind of, what you can tell us from the briefings that you've been getting? Well, we're looking at some additional funding, uh, and you know, there's been the line two and a half billion, four and a half billion. As the president said tonight, he didn't care how much it was because of the concern it is. Let's get this thing right, and I applaud him for that. Uh, we're going to look continually to watch this very closely. Uh, we had some reports out of China today uh, that were relayed to the president that they have, for the first time, seen some uh, some of this uh, beginning to re be reduced. Uh, you have to forgive me, but I take that with a, with a, with a grain of salt right. because we have heard other things come out of China that proved out eventually we're, we're, we're not even close to the truth, but we're completely fabricated. So over the next two or three days, we're going to be watching that closely and see if we can document uh, through the different World Health Organizations if, if that's actually the case. Well, we'll make sure to get you whatever information we're getting as well. And so. That would be wonderful. We'd love to partner with the Epic Times and continue this partnership moving forward. Wonderful. Congressman Walker, such a pleasure to have you. Thank you. Another fist bump. <laughs>